Hello and welcome to another video on the Powered Armoured Exoskeleton Project. And in this video we're going to be doing a new design for a upper arm and pauldron. That is going on to the new and final prototype for the project. But first we'll just briefly look at why I'm changing the design for the pauldron and shoulder piece over the one we have here. The reason for that in the previous video where I tested all of these armor cases on, this is one of the pieces need changing a little bit just because this was a little bit too tight on the arm. So as it fits over the top there, you can kind of see hopefully on the video that it is a bit too tight around here. So we need to open that out a little bit and I also want to come up with a new shoulder covering design here for the following reason. When I first did this design, I wanted to try and make it interesting. So I put this nice pattern on the cover that will go over the actuator. But then what I've realized with how it sticks out, it's just gonna get scraped off. And while I've been making this suit as narrow as possible to fit through said doorways, like you can see, it's gonna stick out, which means it is gonna get scraped either way. As you can kind of see, as I fit through the door, there isn't really much space. Not only is the surface of these covers likely to get damaged anyway, but I think it would actually be beneficial to be able to use these kind of like cat's whiskers as you go through narrow corridors. So it'd be beneficial if you could actually scrape down the side of things without damaging the surface of this. As while this damaging the surface, of course, will actually damage the armor underneath, there will be a limit before you start scraping through into the ceramic armor. So I want to be able to build the new covers with some attachment points so I could basically attach some sheets of nylon or whatever I want onto them that can be used as sacrificial parts so you can scrape down things without any problems. So we'll go into CAD and take a look at the new design. Firstly, we'll just take a quick glance at the old design just so you can see how the actuator fits in the middle and how the forearm pieces attach onto the bottom. But if we go over to the new design where you can see the arm without the pauldron cover on, the back half of the arm has remained largely the same apart from I have removed some pointless material that goes up the back of it as the pauldron cover will cover that. And then at the front of the arm for that piece that was clashing, I basically flattened it off and pulled it out a little bit which will stop it from digging in while you're wearing the suit and also, if anything, provide better coverage as well. And then if we zoom in a little bit, you should be able to see some holes dotted around. These are going to be fitted with nut inserts for the attachment points for the pauldrons. You can also see how nicely the elbow actuator fits between the forearm and the upper arm piece. And then in a moment, you will see the actuator for the shoulder. So one of the reasons why I wanted to get rid of the extra material around the top of the upper arm was to allow for more adjustment on this piece. So as you can see here, while the exoskeleton is adjusted up and down, the actuator can move freely in this gap. This gap is also a gap that will be covered by the pauldron. That you will see in a moment. As you can see, this is a much more simple pauldron design than the last one, but it should be much easier to make and also with it all being flat surfaces, it should be easier to make these sacrificial plates out of whatever material required does kind of make it pointless putting any sort of decorative thing on it but I actually think this will look a lot sleeker when it's on the suit and should make it more usable. As you can see we've got plenty of holes in here to fit nut inserts to allow for different ways to attach those sacrificial plates and then if we rotate around you can see the gap underneath that allows for room for the actuator while not reducing the armor on the pauldron which should also help for cooling. And at this angle you can also see how there's essentially double thickness of armor on that front portion of the arm which I think is a major plus on this because if a round came in at that angle and broke through, it would actually be going straight through your chest. With that design looked over, we'll get the parts printed out and get ready to lay in the ceramics. And by the magic of editing, we have the pieces here. You can see the pauldrons nice and flat, printed really well. No supports, just a bit of overhang. The upper arm pieces I had to print in two pieces, so I've just bonded them together with glue gun on the outside, which I'll clean off after all the armour is laid into it. It's now time to fit the nut inserts in like we've done in previous videos and then I'll just assemble the pieces together and do a little fit check. If you're new to the channel and haven't seen the previous videos, I'm just basically heating these nut inserts, T-nuts, up and then forcing them into the 3D print. I'll then go over them with carbon fibre to make sure they're fully secure. Making fitting points like this is something that I made a mistake on on the previous prototype, so I'm putting plenty of them in on this one as it becomes very difficult to try fit them in after you've laid the armour. And there we have the two pieces bolted together. I thought I'd do this fit check now before I lay the armour in because I know full well that the resin won't be dry by the time I need to post this video. But nevertheless, we can put it up to the shoulder and you can see how it fits roughly, how much coverage you get on the corner here, which is improved on the previous design. You can also imagine how you'll be able to scrape down the sides of things 
with sacrificial plates mounted on the sides. As for comparing to the old version, we've got the old version here as well, so you can see it is bigger in width. Will probably weigh a little bit more, but it'll be easier to lay the ceramic into and again, provide better coverage. And if we rotate onto the back, you can see how it'll be easier to adjust the exoskeleton up and down with actuator than the back, with it just sliding up and down in that gap, like you could see in the cab design. So with that said, we'll get laying the ceramic pieces into these. Quickly for anyone new to the channel, originally I was going to make my own porcelain ceramic tiles that would be custom sized, shaped and mostly hexagonal like you can see here. That way all of these tiles would fit into the armor casings like a jigsaw. Unfortunately I had problems trying to get any of these tiles killed. The kill firing services near me are either lazy or basically packed out and too busy. So instead I'm using some regular rectangle ceramic tiles and I'm having to cut them to shape. It's not ideal, it takes a while but I have tested it in previous videos and it does work. In this video, like in the previous ones, we're just going to be laying two layers of these custom cut pieces of ceramic in each piece, with a stainless steel backing plate to be added on later. Now all the ceramic pieces are cut, we'll layer some carbon fibre over the nut inserts and then get them all laid in. This first layer will be laid on top of the epoxy resin used with the carbon fibre. I do actually think this will be better for rigidity as well. But then when it comes to the second layer, we'll be layering that in with polyurethane resin, a medium soft variant. Something that we found better to use in previous ballistic testing. I'm not sure how well it comes across in the video, but you are able to push these pieces together pretty well. The gaps in between are very, very small. It just helps to get all of the plates in and then push them all together when all the resin's in there. Instead of trying to do it as you're laying the plates in. It does also help that because this pauldron design is bigger, you do have more overlap on each piece. So I don't have to be perfect in getting it to line up in the edges of the print. All of this ceramic will be covered over by a stainless steel backing plate as well. Kind of similar thickness to medieval armour it turns out. And there'll probably be a composite layer behind that that will also hold nut inserts in so it can be attached to the exoskeleton. And that is the ceramics laid into the new upper arm and pauldron design. We're finally getting through all of these armour pieces and in the next video I think we'll have an actuator video ready. And then after that it'll be time to lay the backing plates and everything into the armour which hopefully I'll have got through it all by then. So if you like the video and you want to see the progress on the project to completion which should be very soon indeed, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you on the next video. And last of all, have a great day.